Life Audio. Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, if you're on Facebook, look under Facebook groups and look for a daily Bible podcast. We have almost a thousand people in there encouraging each other, saying, don't worry, you're not behind. Keep going. (laughs) I mean, Michelle and I are just so encouraged when we see everyone's comments and photos and the prayers we share for each other. It is a wonderful place to be. I feel like I have a bunch of new friends. I really do like people that I know people I'm like connected with at the heart. It's, it's so cool. So I love it. Okay. So today we read a lot. It just seems like we just continue to march forward in the, the life of David and, and I'm learning so much. I was telling Joe last night, I feel like I know David so much better. It's, and, and again, it goes back to the fact that, we're reading in community because I felt that way with Moses. And I remember people on, on the Facebook group, a daily Bible podcast, they were like, I miss Moses. Like, you know, once we came to the end of Moses and I feel like I'm going to feel that with David too. Although I feel like with David, there's so many more ups and downs and, Mm -hmm. and there's some really hard, hard places. And then there's some really good places. And, and so today I felt like this was a really good place. So Anyway, we are reading today 2 Samuel 7, verses 1 through 17, 1 Chronicles 17, verses 1 through 15, 2 Samuel 7, verses 18 through 29, back over to 1 Chronicles 17, verses 16 through 27, back to 2 Samuel 8, verses 1 through 14, and 1 Chronicles 18, verses 1 through 13, and then we finish with Psalms. There's always uh, a good thing when we finish with Psalms. It I just feels agree. like the cherry on top of the Sunday or something. I love it. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, today, according to many, many scholars, we read one of the most important chapters in the word of God. We are continuing to pull this thread. Remember that overarching plan that God has for his people and for his world. He's redeeming the world after the fall, after sin came into the world. He is redeeming it. And it's taking time. It's taking a long time. And there's a lot of people who are just kind of like, okay, God, we're done. We're, we're not waiting anymore. I mean, you can see that with the Israelites. The Israelites just sort of like, okay, you know, they're just grumbling and complaining like they always do. But, they did their own thing for a while. A and then they while. did their own thing. But we're we're seeing that he shares, like while God shares his plan for us, we're sharing, we're seeing much of that today. And it will further get developed more and more as we continue reading into the Psalms and also in the book of the prophets. But in 2 Samuel chapter 7, It opens with David talking to the prophet Nathan about building a house for God. We know that that is what has been on Mm -hmm. David's heart. And he is, he is somebody who's so close to God has this such this close relationship. He's like, I want to give this to God. I want him to have a permanent house. And Nathan of course says, well, yes, of course, because, Hey, this is a great, this is a great want. This is a great desire. So of course, And, but we find out that Nathan spoke too soon and he didn't consult God and of course had to go back to David and correct this mistake. And it's just a great reminder that everything we need to take to God and, and, and so we need to consult God. Um, But, but God's no in this case is actually good news. And what we read here is what is known as the Davidic covenant And God makes a promise that from his royal line, from David's royal line, will come a future king that will build God's temple Mm. on earth. 
and also set up an eternal kingdom. And and of course we know that the the temple will be built by David's son Solomon and the eternal kingdom will be set up through King Jesus. And it's this king, King Jesus, this king that will connect things connect everything all the way back through a, a, um, Abraham and Adam and this the future messianic king, the king of kings will be how God brings his blessing to the nations. And I I just I love seeing the overarching story of the Bible because it's just so cool how like first of all, how mind-boggling to be David and to have God say, "Hey, one of your descendants is going to save the whole world from all of this darkness and mess." I mean, how cool. And and to think that this whole story when we step back, we see a lot of other littler stories, but mm-hmm. They all flow together. And yes, they are taking time. It it takes time to read them, to understand them, to study them, to talk through them, to talk with others like you you are doing with us right now, like Trisha and I are doing and the rest of us are doing. It takes time to sit here and go, oh, that's what God is doing. That's what God is doing. And I just, I love David's reaction to all that God is going to do through his line. It was one of extreme humility of like, really, God, like through me, through me, you are going to do this. And, you know, David had some fumbles. He had a lot of fumbles, but he truly is a man after God's own heart. I mean, next we see a number of battles that happen and we see David's victories, victories given to him by God. And he knows that. He knows that those victories are only through God. He knows that those victories are only through God. They're victories over the Philistines, the Edomites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Amalekites. And um, remember reading earlier today about God making David famous? Well, the victories we read today indeed made David famous throughout the land. And David knew that it all came from God. And so he dedicated the plunder and all the re- all the gifts he received. He gave them back to God. Again, we are seeing a man who ha- has made some mistakes, has made some fumbles, has, has sinned against the great God. And yet he continually goes back to God and says, you are my God. And you know what I love about David here is that his reaction to all that God was doing through his line was one of humility, like Mm. extreme humility. You know, David had some fumbles and he knew he had fumbles and he always confessed his fumbles. And then, and then God always forgave him. I mean, because that's what God does. He does. When we confess our sins, he is always faithful to forgive them. And we're, we're just seeing a man truly after God's own heart here, you know, and then next we see a number of battles that happen and we see David's victories, victories given to him by God. And he does not, he doesn't see that I'm this mighty man. He does see that it's God's victories. There was victories over the Philistines, over the Edomites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Amalekites. I mean, that's a lot. And those were some harsh enemies, some very large enemies. And yet God gave them victory. God gave the Israelites victory. God gave David victory. And, you know, remember when we were talking about the reading, the Davidic covenant, God was talking to David about making him famous. Mm -hmm. And while these victories we read today did indeed make David more famous throughout the land. And and here's the thing that I love. Again, we're going back to that extreme humility. David knew all the time that this was not about him. This was about God. And so he dedicated all the plunder that they got through those victories and all the gifts that were given to him. He dedicated it all back to God. It's like taking taking all those offerings and saying, here, Lord, I don't deserve this. This is all, this was given to me because of you. And God continued to lift him up because he had that heart, that heart that just sort of laid himself down in front of God. Yeah. And we see him. I mean, he's finally, you could get a big head from that. You could say, Mm -hmm. look at me, God's going to use my kingdom. And he could take, I mean, we saw so many people, as soon as they got power, they would just go straight to their head and he yeah. still continued to turn everything 
over to God. And I love that. I think I've realized that more about David. Like, okay, he was a man after God's own heart. And yes, he did make mistakes like all of us do. All of Mm -hmm. us make mistakes, but he really did continually turn back to God. And I'm so glad you went over those fine details of, you know, the the covenant and all the battles and all those things. But I want to take a closer look at Psalm 60 because I love, like you mentioned in the intro, all of a sudden there's a Psalm. It's like, it's exciting to know that we get to see David's heart in a different way through his actual words written out as a song. And um, so first we need to go back to Deuteronomy because this all ties together. I promise it will. But one of the most important words in Deuteronomy was remember. Remember Moses urged the Israelites to remember where they came from and everything that God had done to save them. And God also gave his people promises that when they entered the new land, he gave them promises like, if you do this, this good things will happen. If you disobey, these are the warnings. And so this is God's promise from Deuteronomy one thirty. It says, the Lord, your God, who is going before you will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. And then there was the warning, which is in Deuteronomy 29, 22 through 27. It says, your children who follow you in later generations and foreigners who come from distant lands will see all the calamities that have fallen on the land and the diseases with which the Lord has afflicted it. All the nations will ask, why has the Lord done this to land? Why is this fierce burning anger? And the answer will be, it is because his people abandoned the covenant of the Lord the God of their ancestors, the covenant he made with them when he brought them out of Egypt. They went off and worshiped other gods and bowed down to them. Gods they did not know, gods he had not given them. Therefore, the Lord's anger burned against the land Mm -hmm. so that he brought on it all the curses written in this book. So we have seen this as we've been going on through uh, the rest of Joshua and Judges. We see all Mm -hmm. these curses and even some of the things, but now we're getting back to the promises again. And David understands this history. So he is king, but he's king of, of over a very broken land. Mm-hmm. It's not like everyone suddenly is following God. And from his throne, he looks around and he sees enemies on all his sides. And you mentioned all those battles and he knows why. And then these are the words from Psalm 60 verse one. See, it's all coming around to the Psalm, but he says, you have rejected us, O God, and broken our defenses. You have been angry with us. Now restore us to your favor. So the Israelites have been under God's curse, and David is once again seeking God's favor. And God took the Israelites to this place where their enemies surrounded them because of their sin. But now, like you said, there's that new covenant. And now God's the only one that can get them out. And David knows this and David's song is about this. So you see this whole buildup. Like you said, this is like one of the most important chapters of the Bible, because this is like a turn here where suddenly it's bad decision and bad decision and bad decision. They've been living under the curses, but because David was willing, one man was willing to seek God's heart. He's saying, restore us to your favor. And going forward, even though there is going to be some challenges, um, David's throne is the foundation, of course, of the Messiah. But it was that pinnacle of the Israelites for that season. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing because of David's leadership. It is such a cool thing. And to think, again, just all that is coming through um, because, well, because of David. But because mm-hmm. God chose David and David's line and shows that to be the way that Christ would come into the world. It, mm-hmm. it, it's just to sit back and go, this is really cool. Well, I guess what's cool about it is we know the end of the story. We already right. know the end <laughs> yeah. of the story. And so then to read it this way is like, oh, wow. Like all the details. We read all the details mm-hmm. in Leviticus and we got tired of the details. And then we went and we read more details and numbers and we got tired of the details. But we know that God is a detailed God and we know that he has a plan before the beginning of time. He had a plan. He knew what he was doing. And to see that plan just sort of mm-hmm. roll out is just so cool. It is and so cool. And to use this man who 
continually goes back to God, continually says, oh God, you are my help. You are my salvation. You are the light of my life. I need you. That And it's just such a good example. God used a very human man to do what he needed to do here. And it's it's a beautiful thing. It is. I love it. Well, we need to take a break. And when we come back, we ha- we'll have the word of the day. But first, we need to hear from our sponsor. Stay tuned. When you go to any participating local Christian bookstore, you and a friend can enter to win an all-inclusive trip to visit the set of The Chosen to get a behind-the-scenes look at the filming of Season 4, as well as an opportunity to see the cast and crew. This opportunity is available between April 24th through May 13th. For more information and to check to see a participating store in your area, go to localchristianbookstores.com. That's localchristianbookstores.com. This opportunity is available now through May 13th. This episode is brought to you by He Gets Us, a nationwide campaign all about raising the respect and relevance of Jesus. Did you see the Super Bowl ads about Jesus? Are you wondering how you can get involved? He Gets Us is a multi-year effort to raise the respect and relevance of Jesus in the United States. Thanks to this unprecedented campaign, millions of Americans are discovering the life-changing impact of Jesus. And we want you to be a part of the movement. Join more than 45,000 He Gets Us fans, getting the latest updates, inspiration, prayer ideas, and easy-to-share resources via text message by subscribing to our fans' community. To do so, text FANS to 70193. By being a fan, you can get exclusive updates on new ads, events, and other exciting news related to the He Gets Us movement. We'll also keep you inspired by giving you access to reading plans, prayer guides, and other tools to help on your spiritual journey. Join this community of like-minded individuals who share your passion for spreading the love of Jesus. Simply text FANS to 70193 to join today. Okay, the word of the day is dynasty, which is a line of hereditary rulers of a country. So God gives a promise to David in 2 Samuel 7, 16. It says, your house and your kingdom will continue before me for all time and your throne will be secure forever. This promise is also echoed in Isaiah 9, 7, speaking of the Messiah, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. So David grasped this promise in our reading today in 2 Samuel seven nineteen. it says, And now, sovereign Lord, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty. Do you deal with everyone this way, O oh Lord? You know, he, he understood, David understood the magnitude of that. And then he went on to say in it's verse, uh, it's huge, it's huge. In verse 29, he says, and may your name be honored forever so that everyone will say the Lord of heaven's armies is God over Israel and may the dynasty of your servant David be established in your presence. So these prayers of David aren't just about David, but also about the kingdom of to come, which he understood, he grasped that. And then the new, in the New Testament, mm-hmm. Jesus is often referred to as the son of David. And this emphasizes his connection to David's dynasty. So for an example, Matthew 1, 1 in the genealogy of Jesus is traced back to David. It says, this is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So this is everyone who was reading this. Uh, they knew exactly what those promises are. As soon as you say the son of David, the son of Abraham, they knew what Jesus was claiming and who he was claiming to be. Um, but finally, the prayers of this very human King David pointed to an eternal King, which is Jesus. And then in Revelation eleven fifteen, it says the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his, of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. So this emphasizes that Jesus' reign as King will be eternal, just as God um, promised David. And so finally, remember, 
this dynasty is for us too. So we talk about this dynasty, this everlasting kingdom, but it's not just for those people <laughs> in the Bible. Um, Romans mm-hmm. 8, 16 through 17 says, for this, his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we share his glory, we must also share his suffering. And it's amazing how David's story is connected with all our stories. So mine and Michelle's and everyone who's listening, um, this is part of our story. Yet this passage also reminds us that just as if we're being part of the dynasty, we also have rewards and blessings, but there's also suffering. So even after David was on the throne, um, life wasn't easy, which we will see in the upcoming weeks. But the promise of being part of Jesus' dynasty gives us hope and strength to persevere, knowing that we are part of something greater than ourselves, something that's everlasting and eternal. And so it's just amazing. Like, this is our story, too. Like, we're reading this these chapters. We're reading about David. We're reading about him being on the throne. But if we have accepted Christ, um, this is part of our story too. Mm -hmm. It is so much a part of our story. And I will go back again to the, the point where I think that humility is key in this story. Like God hands him this big, huge dynasty, this big, huge promise saying, Mm -hmm. this is what's going to come from you. This is an heir that is going to come from your throne. And David responds in such great humility. Um, In verse 25 of 2 Samuel 7, he says, and now, O Lord, I am your servant. Again, I am your servant. He is the king. He is one of the most powerful kings. And he's, he's like, but God, I am your servant. Do as you promised concerning me and my family. Confirm it as a promise that will last forever. And may your name be honored forever so that everyone will say, the Lord of heaven's armies is God over Israel. And may the house of your servant David continue before you forever. You know, God promised to make David famous Mm -hmm. in, in this whole line. And in like you were just going down the dynasty of David's in that line forever. When Jesus is talking about it, when Paul is talking about it in the New Testament, David is in that line. He is famous. Mm -hmm. He is famous before so many people. And yet he's like, God, I want to make you famous. Like, this isn't just about me. This is about you too. And, um, and that's, that's why I think David is key in so many ways as we're Mm -hmm. learning about him. There's so much to him. And it's not just because he's this, this warrior shepherd. It's not just because he is this reigning king. It's because he has this, this softer heart that wants to not Mm -hmm. only please God, but go that extra effort to say, God, you are my God. I will do whatever it takes. And if you make me famous, then I'm going to turn around and make you famous. And, um, but we, we see a man, even before God's promises that he, he was like, I'm going to, this is for God. Like when he took on Goliath, this is for God. And, and so we saw that from the very beginning, it wasn't just because God gave him this promise. We saw this from the very beginning. He wanted to make God famous. And now God is giving him this incredible gift, just such a beautiful gift. Yeah, that we all get to be a part of. Yeah. Because of his humility and wanting to honor God, that is part of our story too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Would you pray for us today as we go about our day? Yeah. May we be thankful, I guess, is what I'm saying. We need to be thankful that we are a part of this dynasty. Mm Mm-hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that we are part of your everlasting dynasty, that when you made this plan for salvation to come through David and to come through Jesus and to be eternal, that you did it for us. I thank you for that we are your children and that we are joint heirs with Christ and that everything that was given to him is given to us, that eternity with you, Lord. I thank you for um, the sacrifice of Christ, that we can approach your throne and we can be part of your kingdom. And I pray today that in our thankfulness, we will just see ourselves as your children. I think sometimes we feel like uh, we just look at our mistakes and our failings and we feel so human and we feel unworthy. Well, 
David had the same things mm-hmm. and the same issues. So I thank you, Lord, that in your sight, because of Jesus, we are worthy and we can mm-hmm. say, yes, I am part of this dynasty. And I thank you and praise you for this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. And tomorrow, we're going to continue on with David's incredible story. We are going to read 2 Samuel 8, verses 15 through 18, then move on to 1 Chronicles 18, verses 14 through 17, read 1 Chronicles 6, verses 16 through 30, skip over a few verses and read 1 Chronicles 6, verses 50 through 53, then we're going to go back and fill in the gap with 1 Chronicles 6, verses 31 through 38, and then go back to 2 Samuel 9, 2 Samuel 10, And then finally, we're going to finish things off with 1 Chronicles 19. And again, Hmm. once again, it seems like we are sort of jumping all over the place, but it will make sense. It will make sense. And you're going to be like, oh, that's how it all fit together. That's Mm -hmm. so cool. I love it. I just want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with a daily Bible podcast. Uh, you would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcasts without them. They believed in us from the beginning. They were believing in you because they want you to be encouraged um, by reading the Word of God every single day and learning about God. So go to lifeaudio.com and you're going to find other great podcasts that will continue to encourage you and strengthen your walk with God. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye. When you go to any participating local Christian bookstore, you and a friend can enter to win an all-inclusive trip to visit the set of The Chosen to get a behind-the-scenes look at the filming of Season 4, as well as an opportunity to see the cast and crew. This opportunity is available between April 24th through May 13th. For more information and to check to see a participating store in your area, go to localchristianbookstores.com. That's localchristianbookstores.com. This opportunity is available now through May 13th.